For 6a, they want us to graph using transformations. So in order to know do transformations, you want to make sure you know the base graphs. So uh, in the notes for this section where this problem comes from, I talk about the uh, different library of functions that work for each one. So first what you got to do is look at the equation and then from there you can decide which base graph to use. Now the one I'm going to use is absolute value. So that's the one that goes with this because that's what I have. I have absolute value. Now if you take a look at those library of functions, what we have is we have a V-shaped graph there. And it goes through like 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so forth. On the negative side, it goes through negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, and so forth. So it basically goes up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, all the way through for that. So with these, these grids here, what you want to do on the test is you want to actually show each successive transformation all the way through. Now, the order in which you do those, uh, it's possible that you can do these in a different order than the way I'm doing it, but as long as you get the same final answer, then that's fine. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to first look at absolute value of x plus 1. So, I'm not going to include everything else, just going to do this. Now, what that's going to do with transformations is you always move the graph in, in, from what's in the inside here, you always move it opposite direction from what you see inside. So there's a plus one there. Instead of moving it to the right, I'm instead going to move it one place over to the left. So now originally I had it going through zero, zero on the base graph. Well now that's going to go through negative one, zero. Now I'm still going to uh, go up one over one from that starting point. So just like I, do, I went up one over one here, I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So if I go up 1 over 1, it's going to go through this point. If I go up 1 and 1 to the left, then I get that. So it's basically the same shape. It's still a V-shaped graph, but it got shifted over one place to the left. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the negative sign out front. So I'm now going to do negative absolute value of x plus 1. And then the last step what I'll do is add the 3 and that's going to be my uh, final answer. So for this I'm going to apply the negative. Now the negative sign means that you're going to take this graph and flip it upside down. So from the point where it is now it's still going to cross the x-axis at the same spot at negative 1. But the whole graph flips down. So if it's on the outside then it's a flip over the horizontal axis. So we're going to flip this one down and what we do it and it looks like this. We just take the graph and flip it over. So instead of going up one and one to the right, instead I'm going to go down one and one to the right. And then also down one and one to the left. So it looks the same as this one right here, but we just flip the whole graph over and it looks like that. The final one is going to be negative absolute value x plus one, but then I'm going to add three to it. So now it's going to take this whole graph and shift the whole thing up uh, three units. So it's still going to, I didn't move it left or right, it's still going to be here at negative one, but everything you see here is going to move up three. So now, where it was on the x-axis, it's now going to be up here at three. So what I do to get the rest of the points, you're going to go down one, one to the right, and you're going to go down one, one to the left, and then that's going to get you your three points there that you can use. Now you can keep taking this all the way down. If you want to see where it crosses the x-axis, you can keep doing the same thing. We can go down one, one to the right, down one, one to the right, and it'll take it all the way back down to here. Likewise, you can do the same thing over there. You can go down one, one to the right, and then down one, one to the, uh, one to the left, I should say, and then down one, one to the left again. And so now you end up getting this V-shaped graph that's, that's here. Okay, so this would be what your final graph is going to look like. So again, we start with the base graph, we moved it one to the left, then we flipped it upside down, and then we raised it up uh, by three. So you'll have to do the same thing on the test. There's going to be uh, some multiple grids provided for you, and there'll be the correct number of grids for how many transformations you'd have to do. So on this 
uh, particular question. There were four grids because there are four different movements to each. So again, the order uh, is different. In fact, I did this a little bit different than what you're going to see the key that shows, but notice again that we ended up arriving at the same answer. So now we'll take a look at another example next.